Hello. Welcome to the live stream. As the as the post said, we're here at Northwest Nuclear Laboratories touring a nuclear reactor built entirely by high school students. Uh, this is serving as two things: one, as a general introduction to the program, and two, as a technical test of all these systems. Because, well, let's see here. Let get to my software here. As you can see, it is just a little bit of a technical mess to work with. So it's gonna it's gonna take us a second or take it's gonna take us a little bit to learn how to use the system. Wave hi to the camera, Carl. But once we get this thing going, we'll be able to do a lot more interact or a lot more live programs from here, and hopefully introduce you all to a lot of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and take you to our reactor room, where I will first switch to that camera. So it's going to be camera four. And Carl, if you could just be on the pan and tilt for me, that'd be great. And I'll go ahead and start out. So, hello there again. This is the nuclear reactor. It's in this person's basement, Carl Greninger's basement. Uh, this program is Northwest Nuclear Laboratories. We're a nonprofit dedicated to teaching and inspiring high school students all about uh, science in general. But to do that, we specifically use this nuclear reactor. As you can see, Carl's just getting the hang of the camera right there. So, a couple of interesting pans, but. Go ahead and start of a general tour of the system. So up here we've got the reactor's main vessel. It is uh, made from six inch conflat fittings. And coming into the top of it, you don't think you quite see this on the camera, we've got about a, we've got 100,000 volts DC coming into this sucker. And what that does, almost all of the air out of this vacuum chamber. But with a little bit of air that's left, place all that air with a special form of hydrogen called deuterium. And Carl, if you want to pull the cam uh, camera back out a bit, I'm going to be showing the control panel off. Uh, that special form of hydrogen, or that special form of hydrogen called deuterium, we use this power supply down here to ionize it, and we ionize it at such a high voltage we actually accelerate it, and we slam. The, if you could pull out again, we slam the deuterium ions together at such a high velocity that the two deuterium ions become one, but they don't become a uh, d. They don't become just deuterium; they change, and then during that change, or that that combination, they become a different element because you got more protons there. But that process gives out radiation, gives out some energy, does a lot of interesting things. And using this device that the students here have built, we can explore that. But this nuclear reactor isn't the only thing we do at Northwest Nuclear Laboratories. We also have a lot of other programs. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my fancy switcher here so I can control where we're going. And I'm going to go ahead, or actually Carl, you can do this, maybe. Maybe I'll just do that, or that, or that. I'm going to go ahead and take us into our bio laboratory, which is pointing, camera's pointing at the window right now. So, Carl, if you want to turn camera five around. Any second. Camera three. Sorry, if you want to turn camera three around. There we go. So, you can see we've got a biological laboratory over here. Uh, we've got our uh, biological safety hood. This is where we can uh, er, perform a lot of different experiments while keeping the students safe and also uh, keeping or keeping whatever we're working on not contaminated. Uh, when you're working the biological stuff, one can be dangerous, but you also keep whatever you're doing clean. So this hood does a really great job at that. We've got a lot of interesting experiments under here. We have things like boron neutron capture therapy, which is a type of uh, it's a uh, it's a type of cancer treatment that we've been exploring here, or some of our students have been exploring here. Um, it uses boron and neutrons to really effectively, or in theory, really effectively target certain cancer cells. So a lot of the stuff you see in here is using that, or is exploring that. Plenty of glassware, a lot of our, our chemical supplies over here. Um, over here we have one of our microscope stations. Uh, it's a pretty nice microscope. Uh, we've got digital capture on it so we can uh, see what we're doing, document it, study it later, and it's all over a great tool for our students to have. As we come over here, we're going to start heading more back into the nuclear area again. Uh, this is kind of part of the control systems for our reactor here. Uh, this uh, computer right here is some of the telemetry systems. This is connected to the helium-3 neutron tube, which is part of the neutron spectroscopy our system does, um, and also other systems on the reactor uh, that will give us telemetry information. Uh, this rack of computers right here is a little bit antiquated. We've actually moved a lot of our data and telemetry systems up to the cloud. Um, we'll talk about that more in a bit. Um, but in here, we still got some useful stuff like this computer, and we've got some of our other neutron spectroscopy and counting equipment. So we're going to go ahead and head back into the lab now. So that's going to be camera four again. 
And in theory, I've actually got this reactor warmed up. So you're going to see me try and get this reactor started up once we get the camera shot switched over. There we go. Uh, so Carl, if you want to pan down a bit, keep kind of a wide shot so I can move around and point to different things, that'd be great. So you can see here, we've got a pretty good vacuum in our system. So we got all the air out. Now I need to get the deuterium back in. So to do that, I'm going to get my bottle of deuterium gas opened up. Got a control knob for that bottle back here. Oh, first I got to open it up on the inside. So getting the deuterium gas ready to go. So I've got tank pressure. Now I just need to build up some line pressure. Okay, I've got line pressure. So once I've got line pressure, I can go ahead and enable my gas flow through my mass flow controller. Uh, I'm going to enable the power supply, but not actually turn it on yet. I'm going to stop my vacuum down a bit because that's way too much vacuum to have. Or the, this pump's actually so good that it sucks all the deuterium out before I can do anything with it. And, well, we got this whole system ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to need to have happen now that we've confirmed this is all ready to go, we're all ready to actually start doing stuff, is the high voltage supply is not going to turn on until we get our radiation shield down. So Carl, if you want to come in here, get the shield down, that'll engage the interlocks, and let's actually turn high voltage on and start producing some neutrons. This reactor is so powerful that we do need this very, very large shield we've got here. Uh, we've got lead, we've got cadmium, we've got borated paraffin, a lot of stuff to keep our students safe, and Carl here is the designated shield operator. So he's going to go ahead and take that control, get the shield down. How much does the shield weigh? about uh, one ton, and uh, we have 56 uh, plates of cadmium, uh, 400 lead in the liner, 55 gallons of borated paraffin, um, yeah, and uh, aluminum back in front. So real quick, I'm going to go check the comment section, make sure I don't have any technical difficulties going on to the air while I was getting that field down, because this is the first time we've done this. So if there's any audio problems or anything, now is a really good time to let me know. Ah, uh, yeah, audio is a bit iffy. The wireless mic I've got here isn't the most awesome microphone in the world. Uh, I've got actually lab or mics hanging up in the lab. The problem is uh, that takes a little bit more control. I gotta kind of adjust audio a bit on that more. Uh, that will that will come with time. This is a this is our first real live broadcast we've done. So we're just kind of winging it. We don't have a script. We don't have a plan. We're just going for it at this point. So hope you all enjoy it. Um, unfortunately, there's uh, not many students here right now. They all left here a couple minutes ago, but I'm still here, so we're testing the system out. Okay, let's see. Our car's almost got the shield back down. I'm going to go ahead and head back into the reactor room, and we're going to start throwing some neutrons around. How's that sound? Yeah, audio is fine because I rocked back into the room with the receiver. i got to move the receiver to the lab, but that'll happen eventually. Carl, you got the shield down? Yeah, i got to balance it around a little bit. Do you want to glove up to get the seam line belts on? Do you want to glove up to get the seam line belts on? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and uh, get those on. Okay, so uh, one of these we make sure we don't want any x-ray leakage. So uh, to cover the seam right here and make it a dog leg turn like we need for ex good x-ray shielding, we've got these lead belts we put on it. So Carl, I'll just let you know we've got about six viewers right now and a couple people active in the comment section. Okay. Although they can't hear you very well because I'm the one with the microphone. That's the power of having the microphone. Okay. So once we get this last belt on, we'll be good to go ahead and start up high voltage and have some fun. You guys, I mean, let's be clear here, throwing around a bunch of neutrons is a lot of fun. Okay, so we're going to go, we're on the number two. Uh, yeah. Okay. So number two MFC enable, go ahead and set gas flow to what, 2.5-ish for now? Uh, 2.5, yeah. 
Yeah, I got that set already. Okay. So, poise you're at point 0.2. Uh, what did you get the scene? A 70,000. We're going to go ahead and drop voltage, leave it in constant current. This is a very, very nice 100,000 volt power supply here. This thing's kind of magical. Oh, the camera went into infrared. Huh, that is interesting. We'll have to figure out how to turn the automatic infrared mode off. That's it. Okay. Uh, note to self. We have to fix that at some point. Okay. Um, we'll turn the camera back off in a second. Maybe enough light will come on. We'll figure it out. Um, so, we'll go ahead and drop voltage to zero before we power it up. Uh, so anyways, this Gamma, Gamma High Voltage Research Power Supply is a very, very nice piece of hardware. We're very lucky to have it. Uh, this thing is a constant current, constant voltage, 100,000 volts DC supply. It can go positive, negative. It's got external control systems. It's got good safety systems. It's a very, very impressive piece of hardware that is a lot of fun to use. So go ahead and do initial power on that, which I do. Do I have that? Oh, the light is on. There we go. That's why we had the light off, so that we can actually see the dials and everything. So we get that on. Voltage is at zero, constant current set to five milliamps. We'll go ahead and enable high voltage. It makes a very satisfying hum. I'll go ahead and point the microphone to that so you can hear it. Yeah, get a load of that, that's amazing. Okay, so we've got voltage enabled. Gonna go ahead and go shield lights off so I can get this camera ready to go. And I've actually got a camera inside the reactor vessel that I can switch to when I get my little sw switching app up. Come on, you can do it. So I believe that's camera five. So yeah, that's inside the reactor vessel. So I'll go ahead and come back to me right here. There we go. Carl, you want to pan down a bit, just leave it wide. Uh, so we got gas, we got voltage, and we can start cranking the voltage up. Got to ignite the plasma first. So there we go. We got plasma ignition. There you go. So we're not producing any neutrons yet, or very much radiation at all. We're only at 9,000, 10,000 volts. Uh, go ahead and switch back to the lab view there. That's the wrong camera. That's the right camera. Carl, you want to step out of the way of the camera? Um, what have we got? I've only cranked it up to 10. Yeah, get our constant current back a little bit. We're pretty low on D2 right now, aren't you? Well, keep gas down, start raising up, get some neutrons. Sound good? Yeah, well, we'll have to <laughs> The reactor can be a bit fun on startup. You've got to balance a whole bunch of things, make sure that you're staying right around 5 milliamps. Reactor has to outgas, just a whole lot of stuff. But that's, that's a system like this. I mean, that's every, every highly technical system. I'm going to go ahead and manually pan the camera down just a bit. There we go. The uh, remote override, grabbing the body and twisting it. Not in a vacuum or what? Still I guess any bit then? Yeah, I think we are. So as the re as the reactor turns on, uh, the plasma inside, which we'll switch switch back to that lovely plasma view. Uh, if I can get my control panel on my phone opened up again. So the plasma inside is actually starting to clean the vessel walls off. And while it's doing that, it's introducing a lot of stuff that's not deuterium into the beam line. And that not deuterium actually starts to kind of poison the reaction. So what we're doing right now is kind of slowly ramping up voltage, slowly ramping up currents to the point where we can get that burnt off so we can start to increase voltage again and get more energy going into just the deuterium. What? We're out of D2? That's already opened up. We're really low on that dial. We got a bottle of deuterium sitting off to the. S we got a. Let's see. Uh, there we go. We got a bottle of deuterium sitting off to the side there. So just getting that. It's that. Thing, it's really low in pressure. Like you can barely read how much is registering on scale right now. So you're just getting enough flow to the machine. But now that we've got that sorted, we should be able to start dropping flow and increasing voltage. Feeling better now? Sweet. 
So I don't know if you can tell, but if you look at the uh, video in there, you can see the beam's got a lot cleaner, a lot less spread out. It looks a lot less like coronal discharge, a lot more like a beam plasma. So inside that conflict chamber I showed earlier, you've got a couple of things. Uh, you've got that big poiser, that high voltage feed through in the center. That's that ring you see in the center of the screen right now. And then on the ends of the reactor, we have uh, titanium. And that titanium is there so that when the deuterium ions that are accelerated by the beam hit the titanium, they get stuck there, and then another ion can come along behind it and hit it again and fuse. Um, I want to be clear here, we're not saying we're reducing the energy required to uh, cause a fusion event. Uh, if you know why I'm saying that, you understand what I'm saying, this is not, namely core fusion. But, but that does enable us to increase the efficiency of our reactor instead of just trying to slam the ions together in the beam. So we're passing up to 20,000 volts right now, so just starting to produce some x-rays, but we're really not in that heavy production territory. Um, I've got that display is down right now, so I'm going to go check. Yeah, so we've got an oscilloscope car if you want to move off to the side so the camera can see the reactor. Uh, let's see, if I keep switching to that one instead of that one. So I'm going to pan the camera down a bit here. Uh, you're, so if you see that oscilloscope down there, that oscilloscope is connected to our helium-3 neutron detector. Um, Carl, do you want to go back to the control room so you can zoom and focus? Uh, so, you, Carl will zoom in on this in a second, but you'll see that this is actually showing neutron events. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to keep on slowly increasing our power. We're just coming through 40,000 volts. Oh, we're in constant current mode right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and get our set point set to... We'll go to... We'll go to 65. And now, what's cool about the supply is that current is... Carl, you want to pan down here again. So this oscilloscope, the peaks on this oscilloscope, every peak is a neutron being produced and interacting with our helium-3 neutron tube. So this will start to get a lot, a lot more dense as time goes on. And if I can figure out how to do this real quick, I can maybe make that a bit better for the camera. Maybe. There we go. I think that's the best we'll be able to get intensity. So you can see the occasional peaks, but those will get quite a bit more dense here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and, if we got batteries in this, turn one of our So you can hear the occasional chirp right now. Um, I think, let me see. Yep, we got good batteries in this detector. So you can hear that occasional chirp, chirp, chirp. And every chirp you're hearing there is an x-ray. I'll do that in a second. Oh yeah, so we'll, if Carl pans the camera back out in a second, you'll be able to see that this is. But we've got some more detectors coming online right now. And as he does that, I'm going to start decreasing gas a little bit, which is going to let the supply increase voltage. Ooh, it's touchy right there right now. Yeah, I'll be arguing more like the old product. I'm going to close our gate valve in now a little bit. What's the first thing about it? Do you have a plasma cleaning? Oh, pressure is too high right now for the flow we're putting in. So that's chamber contamination. I'm going to... So that's the chamber view right now. So we're just... Uh, a lot of D2, and that's going to do is ignite a plasma in the entire chamber, and that's going to kind of scrub the walls off. Um, I will admit, we turned this thing on a little bit quickly tonight, so we didn't really give it much time for the uh, diffusion pump to pump on the vessel and really pull all the contaminants out. But that's, that's what you do when you're going live. So I'll let that, let that flush back down and then go back to regular ops. Yeah, um, and you'll find that uh, just cleaning up the line making sure that... Oh, it's the same thing with the microscopes. I've been provisioning high voltage all weeks on the microscopes at work. Except we do, we uh, reconfigure the electron gun to spray electrons all over uh, all the contaminants. But in this case, we're doing it with the de deuterium. Do you want to go uh, zoom three out? Or zoom four out? Yeah. So once we get that camera zoomed back out, I'll go ahead and start doing some reactor ops again. You know, I'm going to try pulling the comments up on my phone so I can read what you're saying as I'm doing this. Uh, this type of reactor is a, uh, it's a bit of a modified Farnsworth Hirsch fuser. Uh, the uh, geometry you have of that poiser on the inside is a little bit different than most. 
So as I was saying, I can now see your comments on my phone. Assuming I'm actually connected to Wi-Fi. Eh, we'll find out. So, once again, we're in constant current at 5 milliamps, so I know I've got some room to go ahead and start to increase my voltage again. So I'm going to slowly start to take down gas flow. And as gas flow starts to come down, we're going to see that voltage is rising. We're passing through 35,000 volts, 40,000 volts, Forty five thousand volts, fifty thousand volts, fifty five thousand volts. And I'm just gonna let it run there for a bit, that's gonna clean the chamber off and that's gonna we're gonna start to sputter some more. So you can probably hear the X-ray detector screaming at me right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that speaker off. So you can see we're getting quite a few X-ray counts. If I go let's see here, what are we at for counts right now? Come on, reset. It's a really slow dial on this one, so it averages it out. So inside the vessel, I've got, uh, let's see here, dial is still not done moving. Got about 200,000 counts right now in there, so that's, that's pretty respectable, but with my other tube right here, I've got, make sure my window's facing the right direction. I've got pretty much nothing on the outside of the vessel. So you can see that that, act, that lead shielding actually does work. And we have checked this many, many times before. Do another, do another flush. Some neutron counts. So I'm going to. Carl, you want to hold the microphone for a second? Yeah, no problem. I'm going to pan the camera up a little bit. So you can see on top of the reactor, we have that little black box there with a Geiger counter attached. And what that is, is, well, its name is Priscilla, and it's a very, very nice proton recoil detector. Uh, the proton recoil detector is a, or is a scintillator based detector. It is very, very accurate, very precise, and gives us an excellent, neutr or excellent neutron count of this reactor. So the uh, part, what, part of what the shield does is create thermalized neutrons. So we can detect a few of those on the outside of the vessel. Not many right now, but we're not running at that high of a voltage. Only 55,000 right now. Yeah, getting a couple of neutrons out here. Um, I can go ahead and tell you what kind of counts we're seeing on the inside of the reactor when I come over to our old, uh, our old Ortec Nimbin. Let's see here, set that to 10 to the 2. So inside the vessel, I am seeing around, let's go, it's one second time constant, 10 to the 2, HT is enabled. Okay, we got the tube now. Uh, just seen around around 40 counts per second inside of inside the vessel on our helium-3 tube. But as we start to increase our voltage quite a bit, we'll go ahead and see that increase. And Carl's bringing one of the carts out right now. This it's got another neutron detector tube right here. And this one's surrounded by paraffin, so we're actually thermalizing the neutrons so we can detect them with their counter easier. So you can see our counter starting to tick up a little bit. Our counts per minute is just starting to rise a bit. And we're definitely getting some neutron, produ neutron production. So this reactor pr produces 2.4 MeV neutrons because the uh, deuterium on deuterium based uh, nuclear fusion reaction, when those happen, the amount of energy that's left over, the mass energy conversion, uh, gives the uh, escaping neutron 2.4 uh, MeV of energy. So you can see you've got, still got this thing climbing, and we're actually, our uh, count rate's starting to climb too a little bit as the reactor vessel cleans out and the supply can give it a bit more voltage without uh, contaminating the beam line. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the reactor vessel camera now. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh. That's a good problem. There we go. Okay, please connect. 
connection in progress. Connected. There we go. I have control again. So you can see inside the vessel that beams can become a lot, a lot smaller, a lot more contained, and it's a lot more efficient right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the YouTube comments, see how that goes. Power in, power out calculation, um, it's bad. It's really, really inefficient. We're not trying to produce power with this reactor. This reactor is a research device. It's an educational device. But we're not going to power your power your city block with a sucker. It's just, just not designed for that. Um, a lot of the energy we produce is wasted as heat inside the plasma. That plasma hits the reactor vessel walls and ultimately um, gets uh, taken out through our water chiller. I'm going to switch back to that view. Uh, so right behind Carl, there's a water chiller on the ground. Carl, you want to point to the water chiller? So it's that sucker right there. All right. This sucker right there. And we've got copper coils wrapped uh, right there. We've got copper coils wrapped around the inside of our reactor, and those copper coils serve to cool down the vessel or the reactor vessel walls and uh, keep the thing from overheating, because it will overheat if we don't water cool it. Funnily enough, even though we have a water cooler, we don't actually have a water cooled diffusion pump. Uh, how long can this run reliably after setup? Uh, with the constant current, constant voltage supply, this thing can go a really, really long time on its own. Um, it's uh, designed to be very stable. It's designed to be easy to run. There's only a couple of control knobs that do it. And we are kind of, we, we literally just started warming the diffusion up before the stream, so we're not running at full vacuum pressure, which is part of what was giving us some issues. And then the machine being started up can be a little bit cranky right now. Well, we've got the supply cranked up here around 60,000 volts, 5 milliamps going through the beam, uh, 0.8 cc's of deuterium gas flowing into the chamber per minute, and a chamber pressure of uh, 3 microns. And we've got nuclear fusion going on, which is uh, pretty dang impressive for a reactor built by some high school students. Uh, this is actually uh, where I learned to work with high vacuum and high voltage before I started working with electron microscopes. While I was here, I, I bought my first microscope on eBay. So that, working on this system taught me a lot of what I need to know now to We'll spend all day repairing electron microscopes, and yeah, it's a lot of a lot of the similar systems. You got control systems, you got vacuum systems, you got high voltage systems, and you put them all together to do something. And it turns out that's a lot of science: vacuum, high voltage, control. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, reactor's running pretty steady right now. Uh, you see, we're still kind of climbing on our count right here on this detector. Um, but you'll notice that if I pull this detector out of this paraffin that I stopped seeing most of my neutrons. That, that count rate stopped going up. And the reason is that this detector detects thermalized neutrons better than it detects full energy neutrons. So by putting it inside of this paraffin, I start to thermalize those neutrons, and the detector can actually interact with the neutrons now and uh, count them. So let's see here. What else have we got to talk about here? Yeah, I'd say this stream was a success. We've shown, a lot of, we've shown off a lot of our interesting technology here, shown off kind of what we can do with the reactor. Uh, a lot of fun things are going to be happening here in the future. Um, on this channel, we're going to be broadcasting uh, next week. We're going to have a lot of students here, hopefully get some of them on the air. Um, but we've got a lot of other fun toys here, too. We've got Tesla coils. We've got an electron microscope coming I'm working on right now. It's a JSM 840. It's going to be pretty great to have. Uh, Van der Graaff generator, we've got a, uh, another 100,000 volt power supply that we built here ourselves, it's another car called Walton Design, and that thing can charge a big capacitor, we can have fun with that, so a lot of interesting toys, and we really pride ourselves on being able to give access to those toys to high school students. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to meet some of those students next week. Um, anyways, I'm going to... Oh, we lost the plasma. So what's happened is, is we just didn't have enough gas flow, so the uh, plasma basically went out. So I'm going to drop my voltage back down. Just be a bit gentle on the supply. Flow just the tiniest bit more gas into the vessel. And try and get some reignition. Oh, we got ignition. So I can start to pull my gas flow back down. Oh, lost it. Pulled it down too quickly. Okay, we got ignition. Go ahead and let that build up a bit. 
Then we can start to increase our voltage. That sucker railed out at five. Go ahead and get my voltage to a set point. Go ahead and get our set point to 50,000 volts. And then start to drop my gas, my, my gas flow, which will drop pressure in the vessel. And the constant current supply to maintain that constant five milliamps. Now that we've got less gas, it's gonna start to increase voltage. sure gas doesn't go out. Make sure I don't drop flow too low. It's all a big delicate balancing act. Oh, I'm in a bit too low with gas there. Oh no, I just hit my 50,000 volt set point. So go ahead and get our set, move our set point up to 60,000 volts. Having a 100,000 volt constant current supply is just as much as fun, just, just as much fun as it sounds, by the way, in case you're wondering. Start to drop gas flow a little bit more. And hopefully get us balanced at 60,000 60, volts at five milliamps. Here we go, we got one cc of gas per minute, four microns chamber pressure, five milliamps at 60,000 volts. Go ahead and pull the switcher back up, go ahead and take it over to the view of the reactor again. So that plasma you see there, there is actually nuclear fusion events happening inside that plasma. It's a really pretty purple color, um, it's just the camera we have in there right now uh, can't see that because it's in a night mode, because it's a cheap camera. The camera's exposed to so much radiation that we don't want to put an expensive camera under there because you literally start to have radiation hitting the pixels on the camera and then the pixels start working. So you don't put a nice camera in there. It's got a, it's a cheap old tape recorder. I forgot to turn the display off on it too, so that's why you got the night shot of the no tape and all that sort of stuff on it right now. It is a 16-bit camera though. Let's go ahead and come back here real quick. Cut the stream off here. We've shown a lot of interesting stuff we're doing to our reactor. Showing it running, showing it producing some neutrons. And ultimately hope that you come back again to see what our students are up to. So let's see here. I'll go ahead and just bring voltage down. Actually, I can just hit the button there. Voltage is down. Gas flow all the way down. Turn my off. These mass flow controllers are a really cool type of way. It's a really cool way of introducing gas into a vacuum. Turn the controller off up there. Turn voltage off up there. And yeah, that's a nuclear reactor built by high school students. Well, hope to see you all again.